Um, oops, I guess I'll. S um, I guess it's time. So you are all welcome to this afternoon's uh, Dell breakout session. And um, for the next 40 or so minutes, we'll be uh, looking at um, how we measure OpenStack performance. And we will specifically be looking at uh, a new benchmark, an industry standard benchmark, which, has, which will be released out of the spec organization. And uh, we'll be talking more into how that benchmark is going to be used. And, um, and, the, and, and, and the kind of uh, performance features that will come out. Um, for today's presentation, uh, my name is Nicolas Wako. I'm a performance engineer uh, at Dell. And uh, um, we run these benchmarks in partnership. We have a very strong and tight partnership with Red Hat. And, uh, the manager in charge, Douglas Jacques Sobar, popularly known as Shacks, uh, is going to be part of this presentation and he will also take us through um, a lot um, uh, of, um, uh, will give us some information on how he's using uh, these benchmarks. So uh, just uh, one more. Right, so again, welcome to um, uh, our session on, uh, we're gonna zero in on the spec cloud benchmark, so benchmarks are used in the industry all the time for comparisons. Uh, they, they vary in difficulty on uh, benchmarks that you can download and run immediately and get a result, which uh, you, know, you obviously um, can time things on your own. But as you get to an industry standard workload, first of all, there are, are some complexities. And it's, it's all about a committee. And it's not just Dell and Red Hat. It's a committee that meets. They agree upon a standard benchmark and that uh, is supposed to basically model what happens in the industry, you know, running um, essentially in clouds with spec cloud. So if you're not familiar with it, so Nicholas is gonna step us through, but to do that, we have members of my team that work with Nicholas. We have other folks from the spec cloud committee here. So uh, yeah. sit back and enjoy um, learning about spec cloud. Thank you. Um, we are privileged today to have the chair of, uh, of Spec Cloud Committee, uh, Mr. Salman Basel uh, from uh, IBM. And uh, he will be, I'll be calling upon him um, to give us some insights uh, as the presentation goes as to the, the design considerations um, that happened, the thought process that was going on and why we made the decisions that we made. And then we also privileged to have um, uh, Joe Talerico, who actually works with, uh, with Sharks. And Joe is an ex-chairman of the Spec Cloud Committee, and uh, he's been very involved in the development of this uh, benchmark standard. Um, Quick interrupt. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, Nicholas. So I've been asked to, we have to uh, oh, okay. take the stage if we can, so put her up here. and. Um, I guess this is being videotaped, and uh, oh, okay. And so with that, we'll. Uh, All right. Now I'm in the limelight. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they will be tagging in from time to time, um, and the other person who is not in the room now is Zach Fadika. He works for Intel. He's also on the committee. Been very active. Been involved in code development and everything. So anyway. Um, you can ask questions at any time, and the, and the feel free. It should be as interactive as possible. Uh, right, so we'll quickly go through um, uh, the spec cloud benchmark, and then after that, uh, Sharks will also take us through how, the, uh, the, how all these uh, performance tools are being used, especially in, 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 what in, uh, in the measurement of uh, the OSP cloud. Right, so spec organizations. Um, I don't know, it's, it's, the spec organization is one of the performance consortia that primarily looks and it develops uh, benchmark standards. It's got a wide uh, membership 
and literally um, every who and who in the computer industry is part of the SPEC organization. Dell, as a company, is a very active member of the SPEC organization. And basically, it's a performance consortium, develops and designs uh, benchmark standards. Now, SPEC Cloud has been in existence for over three years, and uh, its job, primarily, the goal was to define benchmark, uh, define a cloud benchmark standard. And if I'm not mistaken, um, the benchmark standard that has been developed is probably the first within the industry as an industry standard. The other, uh, there could be others, but they are proprietary. This is one which has come out um, from a consortium of, um, of, uh, of, of various companies. And apart from defining the benchmark standard, um, one of the goals was to identify uh, workloads that can be used to measure the cloud and also to determine the run rules. So basically, what this benchmark does is it is zeroing in on infrastructure as a service. It measures both the control and data plane. Um, control, you have things like provisioning time, how quickly it takes to um, you know, create uh, instances. And the, then there's workload performance. And then, it, you, and we'll go through some of these things in the detail. We will look at the workloads that um, are being used. These are workloads that are already, most of them are actually they're all open source and they resemble real customer applications. And the other thing that we have to note is that it benchmarks the cloud, not the application. And it produces matrices, elasticity, scalability, provisioning, and others which allow comparison of clouds. So you can use these um, matrices to compare um, the performance of the cloud. So basically, benchmark model is the infrastructure as a service and basic terminology uh, so that we can all be at the same um, uh, level. Uh, when, we, when I'm talking over an instance, I'm basically talking about either virtual machine, uh, bare metal, or container. Now, those are the three instances that are supported by, uh, by this benchmark. Now, we have a concept of um, a white box cloud, and that a white box cloud is one where the tester has full control and knowledge of the underlying infrastructure. A black box cloud is one where the tester does not have full knowledge. It's actually the inverse of the other. And this is what you typically get in a public cloud. And, the, and, and the, where in many cases, all you know is just the billing information. And then you have an application instance, which is really a, a set of instances that run together to run uh, a particular workload. So uh, again, we will be going into more detail to look at, to see what an application instance is, but it's really a bunch of um, instances that are work together to run a particular workload. Any questions so far? Good. Um, those of you who were at the, who attended yesterday's session, we, we had a good discussion on this slide deck. It's a very high level view of the architectural pieces of the, uh, of the benchmark. On the right hand side, you have uh, a benchmark harness. The benchmark harness used is the actually CloudBench, also known as the CB tool. So CloudBench has um, drivers and it also has um, a report generator. And uh, at this time, I call upon the chair of uh, Spec Cloud to give us an idea as to why we chose CloudBench rather than all the other um, drivers and harnesses that we had. All right. So, thank you, Nicholas. Um, as uh, uh, Nicholas mentioned, that the benchmark has been in development for some time. Took t definitely took longer than we anticipated. Um, at the time we started the benchmark development, um, the spec wanted to pick up 
a cloud benchmarking tool that was open, open source, and that could meet various requirements. Uh, these included not being specific to one cloud or not only specific to, say, OpenStack, but being able to deal with other clouds that are out there. Uh, being able to create multiple uh, uh, workload clusters, such as you know, Hadoop clusters or Cassandra clusters or maybe some web application clusters in, in different configurations and settings. Um, uh, so that, those were the reasons that, uh, that, that we used, uh, you know, selected uh, CloudBench as, as the tool. In addition, spec has a number of requirements to ensure uh, that appropriate data is gathered so that uh, companies can perform a peer review of the submitted results. So it's not just that you know, one company can go out and say, here is my spec number, but the results have to go through a peer review process that ensures some validation and, and sanitization before uh, the, the, the marketing division start advertising a cloud as such. So, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Salman. So um, we, so CloudBench is the benchmark harness. It creates or manages the creation of instances, and um, and then after that has drivers that run workloads um, or that measure the, the 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 cloud. And after the the tests have been run, there is a report generator which picks the performance data and generates a report. And you'll see a copy of the report. Now on the right hand side, you can see the system under test and we'll go into more details uh, with that. Now this is um, uh, an instance, an application instance, and the CloudBench can support almost 20 or so workloads, but we ended up selecting only two, and, the, and there is also a reason why we came up with two. Uh, Joe, do you want to chime in on why we chose YCSB and K-means? Uh, out of the several. Yeah, so we chose Cassandra and YCSP to be a database workload that could scale out pretty easily. Um, and then we decided on a CPU intensive workload, so we went with the Hadoop cluster and K-means. So we felt like that was maybe not representative of all workloads, but it is a pretty good mix of workloads that are out there today. Um, there's a ton to choose from, so we felt like this would hit the network the disk and the um, CPU pretty pretty hard, and it does. Right, and and so YCSB is the Yahoo Cloud benchmark, if you aren't familiar yeah. with it. Yeah. Mm. And uh, yeah, it, it will scale out uh, in clouds. So. Okay, so um, a YCSB instance, application instance, literally has um, six um, Cassandra um, seed nodes and then it also has a YCSB instance. So altogether it has seven uh, instances. And then K-means um, runs off Hadoop. We are using the Intel uh, uh, um, high bench uh, version and the, it has uh, one name node and, and then uh, five uh, instances. So um, life cycle of an application instance First thing, the driver initiates the creation or sends a message uh, for an instance to be created. And once all instances that are required to set up an application instance have been created, uh, a message is sent out and the, the, which shows that the application instance is ready for business. And then after that, data generation is starts and data generation will depend on the instance. If it is K-means, then it will be a K-means data set. If it is YCSB, it will be YCSB. And after that has been generated, you get um, a test. Uh, uh, the driver starts, kicks off a test. And once the test is complete, um, results are picked. And then uh, the cycle uh, repeats. And the cycle repeats for depending on the phase of the benchmark. The, if it's a baseline phase, it will only go for five uh, iterations. If it is a, an elasticity phase, it will go for much longer. And we'll, look, get, we'll get into that. Uh, Salman, you want to add on that? No. Okay, fine. So this benchmark has got two phases. There's a baseline phase where these two workloads 
run separately one after the other. And, uh, and every, after every run, I mean, it will run for only five iterations, and then after that, it will stop. So what it really does is to get to, depicts the performance features um, of the cloud when a, ben, um, when a workload is running on its own. Then the elasticity phase, these workloads run at the same time simultaneously, and once they start running, they continue running until the benchmark is stopped. And the other thing that happens is that during elasticity phase, the submitters keep adding on these workloads one after the other until uh, you hit a predefined number of application instances. So the tester can set a certain number of application instances. Or time will come when quality of service uh, breaches occur. And we'll, talk, we'll look into the quality of service breaches. And, the, and once, end of, once the QoS is in any way violated, the whole benchmark stops. I know this is a, a slide that many people ask questions on. So anyone has a question, or is it under, are you, can you all understand it? Yeah, I, I mean, one of the, one of the frequent, frequent problems when you're trying to measure a cloud is, in fact, without this type of methodology, it can, you can easily run workloads that they start up and you think they're running simultaneously and um, you may get metrics that are like, wow, this is a really fast cloud. It was able to do 10 things. Actually, sometimes you get what's called super linear because in reality, if, if the cloud isn't actually servicing all of the VMs concurrently, they're actually running staggered. And so you can see from the chart here that in fact, this methodology prevents super linear scaling to a degree and uh, you know basically is a is a valid uh, mathematical methodology here to to effectively measure clouds in both of these dimensions elasticity and scalability yeah we have a question there yeah can you explain in more detail the stopping criteria okay and next Are you slide cover that? yeah I'm going to cover that yeah right so stopping conditions um, if 20% of our application instances uh, fail to provision, the benchmark will stop. If 10% of them have runs of any nature, it will stop. Or it can also stop because you wanted only a certain number of application instances, and those are the maximum. Or if 50% of them have quality of service violations, and that is throughput. K means, for instance, if it runs longer than a period of time, that is a violation. YCSB throughput, if it goes below a certain threshold, that is a violation. And YCSB read and write times, latencies, if they are longer than a, a, you know, a certain predefined, they will also stop. So those are the stopping conditions. Are you okay with that? Thank you. Now, benchmark, uh, Akadi, you had a question? I have a question. Uh, so do we have the same, uh, you know, QoS violation defined per uh, each benchmark separately? Or is there kind of a common thing, uh, you know, common criteria across the benchmarks um, for, you know, for a violation? This, I mean, is, this is for the workloads, the correct. two workloads, yes. Okay. And it affects all of them. It affects both, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Benchmark, uh, the, the metrics, we measure scalability, which is really the aggreg aggregate amount of work that is being done, and the, it is normalized by, um, by a number that was obtained uh, during benchmark development. And it answers the question of how much more work gets done if N instead of one application instance is deployed. Elasticity uh, really measures how consistently performance is being maintained as the load is increased on the cloud. And it's uh, measured as a percentage. An ideal cloud would have a 100% elasticity score. And for scalability, the higher the score, the better. Then we have others like mean instance provisioning time, 
uh, and then uh, we also look at the AI run success. Did all um, application instances run successfully? That's a percentage too. And then the provisioning success, we also keep track of that. So what we have here is uh, a, a very high level um, aspect of the, of the report. This report is also generated uh, or generated by the report generator. And we are showing the primary metrics. The primary metrics are the ones in yellow. As you can see, there is a scalability score, how many application instances we are running, and then there's elasticity, and then the mean instance provisioning time. Those are the primary metrics. Then you have secondary metrics on the little box on the right-hand side. And then we also pick things like when the, when the benchmark was run, and then the SAT configuration. There, it's, a, it's a big report. This is just the high-level point. Any questions? Oh, yes. We capture that in the report, uh, but uh, just not shown here. Yes, so, <laughs> so the industry standard benchmarks, especially if you're trying to characterize clou clouds in a, in a level playing field, it in fact, uh, the vendors are free to participate and and, and vary, um, whether it's servers, core counts, memory, disk I.O., et cetera. So, so as these get formed, if you look at, uh, go to spec.org and see some of the history of all the benchmarks that get submitted, uh, and there's literally thousands of spec CPU and, or hundreds of thousands, I should say, spec CPU and, you know, tens of hundreds, as the benchmark gets more complicated, it's harder to execute and pass all the criteria. So, uh, so it really is up to, uh, it's an open benchmark. So if you want to participate, uh, you know, join spec and um, submit results. And, and um, again, this review process, is it about a two week review for? Yeah. So there's a two week re review that people look at the more detailed uh, report here on have you met this. And, and I'm talking, it's fairly, uh, <laughs> I don't know how many exact pages. Do you have an idea, Nicholas? Probably okay. like uh, eight to 10 pages of the full detailed report, yeah, right? that's true. Well, actually, it's about four. Yeah. I, right, depends on, yeah. Depends, depends on, okay. um, depends on the that config. Answer your question? So I think, I think you can basically vary the hardware components. Yeah, you can. Um, do you, is that? Okay, good. Uh, hi, can SPAC be used to measure network performance? Well, um, well, the network, network has um, how fast your network is. Yeah. Definitely is not measured directly, but it, it helps to have very high. Yeah, yeah, because if you see like when VMs are launched, those could be on a same hypervisor, on a different hypervisor on a same rack, yeah. or a diff like two different racks. So how these normalization would be done, like uh, this network throughput was on same hypervisor, Others was on network throughput of a rack, yeah, and so other was network throughput between two racks. So how this right. normalization so, is done? So we'll, I'll cover a little bit of more of the component level benchmarking and things. I mean, traditionally, the, there's, a, there's a whole set of open source, open standard uh, workloads like NetPerf or iPerf. Uh, uh, there's, a, there's an open stack uh, version called Shaker that can measure network throughputs. And, and again, that's all fine. Exp want you to, you know, kind of use those tools to build your clouds and and configure your system. So Spec tries to measure what is the cloud performance at an application level, yeah. and build a, a level playing field for a real application scalability, <laughs> elasticity, and provisioning. Those are the three metrics in in the yellow here. Yeah. And again, it, it wasn't just Red Hat or it wasn't just uh, IBM or, or Dell. It's a whole consortium of uh, of companies that come together yeah. to try to build a cloud benchmark. Okay. okay. Thank yeah, you. Joe. Just a second. He's uh, a, yeah. yeah. So, Joe. I mean, you're asking how it's normalized. So, like, when Cassandra, the YCSB workload launches, um, we're not pinning the guests to a certain host. We're letting the scheduler yeah, determine where they land. So they could land on the same hypervisor as you mentioned, and they'll get great throughput, right? Yeah. But if they're distributed across, you know, because the the RAM filter will put it based on which host has the most available RAM, right? 
So you could end up where you have a VM on across racks, same rack, or an even same hypervisor. So we're not dictating where that lands. So it will be normalized through the results, because the results will vary based on how that AI performed. OK, okay. yeah, thank you. Uh, quick question. Um, uh, I see the tests are running for only 40 minutes. Is there a tweakable parameter to enhance the longevity of the test uh, so that you can uh, emulate like a user scenario or a workload? Oh, um, so what you're seeing here is just the elasticity phase, mm -hmm. and that's what is shown here. But before that, the baseline phase takes a, lo a lot longer. Okay. And again, those times will vary whether it's a, whether it's a, pub a pu public cloud could take longer for the same period. But um, yes, this, this is just capturing the, the elasticity phase. Nicholas? And uh, yes, Salman is right. adding on. So the uh, you know, time, how long should the benchmark run, right? A minute, 10 minutes, an hour, 10 days, a year. All of those are valid numbers depending on, you know. Um, I think, you know, in order to get some, you know, there's also how long it takes to measure stuff. In some of the tests that have been run on public clouds, uh, which are not shown here, and you know, it has taken tens of hours to, for the entire benchmark run, and as long as the cloud can support the provisioning of additional instances and there is no violation of quality of service limits, the benchmark will infin you know, scale as the cloud infinity s scales. But if the cloud has certain limits, I don't know, maybe it's a small cloud or Maybe it has some provisioning violations, the benchmark will stop earlier. So it really depends on the underlying cloud. Benchmark has no limitations on when it would stop. It's really a function of cloud. So okay. there is a parameter where you can set run this cloud benchmark for this time or no. something like that. We don't have that. Hey, do you want to go back to the stopping criteria again? Yeah. The, yeah, time is not a stopping criteria. What is the, the stopping criteria is what I explained in the previous slide. So you cannot go there and say, run for 10 minutes or run for 20 minutes. No, it's not there. You can set the number of, uh, maximum number of application instances as you see on the top. Yeah. So you can set it to, let's say, 100 or whatever. You know, you can have just 10 application instances, so maybe 70 right. instances total or whatever. So if you want to run a short time, then you can say, run for six, I mean, get me six instances. That will definitely take a shorter time than 100 or 200. Right, and so if you do reconfigure different hardware platforms, you may have to spend some time to, to size for this benchmark. You know, obviously, probably start out with fewer instances and, and ramp up unless you want to wait for, that, for a year. And that's <laughs> so. how we typically do. We start off with a few, then you keep adding until you get to a, um, a size that is good for your configuration. OK, good questions. Any others? Otherwise, uh, let's move on. Possible next steps. Uh, Salman, you want to take a stab at that since you are the chair? What do you have? What <laughs> goodies do you have for us? <laughs> if you'd like. Um, so I would perhaps uh, say this. Um, you know, OpenStack, let's, let's talk in the realm of OpenStack. OpenStack has thousands of configurations in probably hundreds of configuration files, probably less than 100, around 50. Anytime somebody goes out and wants an OpenStack cluster, they have to figure out you know, which configuration is right, which networking is right, which hardware is right. Wouldn't it be nice that certain hardware or certain OpenStack configurations are certified as being run at or as having achieved some scale uh, that is measured according to some standard, be that spec cloud standard or some other standard, so that anybody who's looking to deploy s stuff and use OpenStack can just go or go out and, and deploy. So I think that's that's an OpenStack, and I think that should be considered in the OpenStack performance group. In the in the context of um, the spec cloud, um, you know, some of the things that were not explicitly measured here and are the focus of the next will be the focus of next release and, and we will invite more participation is how do we measure, especially in the public cloud settings, how do we measure cross uh, region performance, right? When application is deployed across uh, across clusters. Uh, there are certain operations such as, uh, migra uh, such as uh, live migration, they should not explicitly measured. How do we account uh, for uh, 
uh, for those. And uh, some, some workloads such as object storage workloads are not part of the benchmark. So how do we incorporate that as, as, as things go along? And then, you know, this is the IES benchmark. So if you're deploying an OpenStack cluster, and it, you know, if you have one configuration, you can run the benchmark and get a score, run another configuration, another hardware configuration, get a score and see the difference. It's a standard, um, and then, but you know, it's, an, it's, an, it's still an IS benchmark. When you go to platform as a service benchmarks, things slightly change. Um, and so what, what would account for those pass uh, related platforms and how do we measure them in a, in, a, in a meaningful, comparable and repeatable way is still an open question. Okay, and nothing more useful to add to that. Uh, any questions before um, Sharks takes us through uh, a deep dive on, okay, yeah. So we run uh, private cloud. Can I just download this and make my own figures and then tell my users that we achieve two thirds of AWS? Or do I have to publish and be reviewed before the numbers yeah, are? There is a process you have to get a license uh, from, from the spec organization. Then you'll be able to download the kit and then run. And then uh, publishing the result again, um, there, there are some rules that you have to go through. And, uh, but if you want the result to be published, it has to go through a review. Yeah, but you don't need to necessarily publish. All, so all if I just want private numbers, oh, I just need a numbers. license and download it and run it. Yeah, you can download it. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Mm. Yes, it. yes, sir. Okay, um, there is a hardware vendor, by the way, uh, but we also um, uh, sell um, a solution, a reference architecture, uh, that, so in a way, when we publish these results, we are highlighting how our hardware solution, I mean, so how our solution compares with other, with other vendors. So it's a system uh, a solution in the sense that you have hardware, software, and the, uh, the whole reference architecture which runs this benchmark. Yeah. Yes, Alman. Uh, mm -hmm. So, how, can this benchmark be used to measure public clouds? Absolutely. Have we measured? Yes, many of them. Do we find surprises? A lot. Um, of course, I cannot say anything in, in the in the in the due to confidentiality, but. You know, there are public clouds who perform nice on provisioning, suck on runtime, and vice versa. Good on, on runtime, suck on provisioning. You go to some esoteric instance, instance types, lots of provisioning failures. You go and do maybe some uh, different networking, uh, not so, not such a quite result. So, it, you know, I think I think from what we have done in internal measurements, and and anybody who is a spec member. Uh, can can look at what has been uh, done uh, in the public cloud space and at least in in the in the confidential realm you can see how this benchmark differentiates across uh, public clouds but that information obviously uh, for obvious reasons is not necessarily public uh, unless the vendor uh, ch chooses to ch chooses to publish it uh, after going through a peer review process okay thank you yeah and, and again i think the the value of, of spec cloud can also be used internally as as vendors you know support different certified configs they could basically collect some metrics against each of those configs and keep them in house if if they publish so it doesn't always have to be the top result or the peak result necessarily so you can use it like sizing um, so uh, we don't have this was the main topic is is to to share what spec uh, industry standard consortia um, we're proud to work with Dell as a partner here when we, um, not just on the committee, but also in, uh, in running uh, some of the workloads on their systems. I do want to just share a few features of Red Hat OpenStack. You know, this isn't marketing, this is technical stuff that, you know, hopefully keep, keeps us competitive and a good choice f as an OpenStack vendor. Um, I'm going to share with you some of the things we do. Um, I think some people asked about maybe some component level testing and, and some other um, tools 
that you can use in the middle here. If you're not familiar with Red Hat and Red Hat OpenStack, we do run a service called TuneD that back basically try to install a profile of Linux's wonderful, rich uh, Swiss Army knife of tunables, but there's hundreds and now thousands of tunables, right? And you as a user and a vendor don't want to necessarily have to art manipulate all those, so we have profiles, and I'll step you through that. Time permits, we can share a little bit of what we're doing, uh, you know, around NFE and uh, essentially DPTK acceleration. Yeah, so TuneD profiles, so uh, been at Red Hat uh, a little over 11 years. Um, director of performance, we do RHEL, KVM, Rev, and OpenStack, and with the acquisitions of some of our storage uh, we also uh, do Ceph for OpenStack, Ceph storage, scalability, et cetera. So what we do in each of these cases, through our lab results, running industry standard workloads, running application loads, we, we help manipulate uh, the Linux settings, sometimes the KVM settings, and in OpenStack, uh, potentially some of the Nova things. And so uh, if, you, uh, if we go over to RHEL OSP over here, uh, we do install a virtual host profile, which basically means the host running your hypervisors on, the, on bare metal essentially should have uh, what we believe a good mix of the proper settings. Uh, these are user mode settings. You're welcome to. Uh, it ships by default. If you're on RHEL 6, you have to add, uh, um, you, you have to yum install TuneD. And, um, you know, I, I recommend there's, uh, there are other profiles out there. Like for NFE, there's one called uh, Network Latency and Low Latency Profiles. Um, so I'm not going to go through the whole details. You know, some of the other um, just open source tools out there so you can measure your components. You can measure your CPU. You can measure your memory under stress. You can measure your uh, network and measure your uh, storage devices under stress test. And uh, essentially you have to build kind of your own metric, if you will. It's not a single metric like Spec Cloud has done for us. So, um, you know, at the Cinder level, there's actually a thing called Ceph Benchmark Tool. And another uh, useful and new addition to uh, Google's PerfKit is now they support running PerfKit in OpenStack. And that too allows us to to download benchmarks, run individual benchmarks, and then report back results automatically. So we do have some papers. Um, one of the things we use the uh, these, these tools is Red Hat's a software company. We do have some decent sized hardware systems. Uh, some of the guys in, uh, from my team here basically, we want you, the end customer or the partner, to be able to uh, sort of do your own scale test, do your own I personally believe these, these component level tests are, are mostly configuration tests. Have you set up your network properly? Are you getting the most you can out of your CEF tier? Uh, you want to run at the speed of the hardware. You want the operating system to get out of the way. And you hope that the control plane and OpenStack's um, management, uh, again, stays out of the way from you. you running workloads in your data tier. So there's acceleration. There's papers on. Uh, on how, how we scale up, you know, Cinder, Neutron, et cetera. <clears throat> Just a quick detour, because we only have about five more minutes. So a quick example of provisioning. Uh, Rally is, a, is, is part of OpenStack. It ships with OpenStack. It's a great way to, um, we have two minutes, so you get two more slides. <laughs> um, a quick example as you scale out, though, is uh, it actually automates the launching of the VM, the build and the run, you can put workloads in it, but they get skewed, essentially, the thing that I commented on before, that sometimes your results, uh, not all the benchmarks are necessarily running simultaneously, but it, uh, it doesn't have a synchronization script, right? So uh, with that, you can find out where you start becoming CPU overcommitted with simple loads like Linpack. You can see what happens when you start overcommitting your memory and all of a sudden, if a hypervisor becomes so overcommitted, your hypervisor will swap, and without the right swap space, it'll actually introduce OOM kills. Uh, on the network side, 
uh, we actually use CloudBench um, internally to, to, again, give us that synchronization point of benchmarks, and that allows us to, to, to set up, you know, evaluate uh, VXLAN offload engines, et cetera. Um, more recently, Shaker's been added into uh, OpenStack, and some of the guys on my team are, are working on contributing back, may, try to help maintain it in the future. My final slide, and I've got a little bit munged. Uh, PowerPoint got an open source guy, I guess, because I use uh, LibreOffice. And uh, anyway, so, but the point is you can run these uh, essentially FIO or different uh, IO workloads inside Guest. The chart on the right was supposed to show uh, up to 64 guests running with ephemeral storage and read and write on the columns that degrade in response time, or degrade in IOPS, I should say, where if you put that on a, on a Ceph tier, we can actually maintain the IOPS across. Uh, there is a Ceph benchmark kit out there, and uh, with that, I'm going to open it up for other questions again. And so I do want to stress, by the way, all the results we did in our lab, we actually have this lab called uh, you know, Bagel, so the big, big A cluster lab is what it was named after, uh, and it basically is now being used by the Ceph team as well, and they're, uh, they're Dell-based hardware, so we scale up to um, 96 nodes and uh, usually um, up to 32 Ceph nodes, so. Yeah, we are going to have only one question because we are eating into um, the next session. <laughs> yeah. so you got to give me the big hook. Yeah, one other slide you mentioned about OVS, DBDK, is that part of the, the spec cloud or some other in the tool No, set? no, so th this, was, this is outside. These are other benchmarking tools. Uh, I didn't get to be able to share the results for the OVS, DBDK stuff, but um, in general, we're performance engineering that. We're again sharing that. Uh, features become available in OpenStack, so you'll have to see me, see me afterwards and we can talk if there's okay. specifics. But same principle, we want to run at the speed of bare metal. So we're running over 2 million packets, 200 million packets a second, you know, on a, on a single uh, Haswell-based system today with, uh, it was six net network, 40 gig network cards and things like that. So these are the tools you use to optimize the various components and once the being optimized, then you can run your spec cloud yeah. benchmark. And, and the industry yeah. st standard benchmark for DBDK is called VS Perf, by the way. So it's part of Open NFE. Okay. On that note, thank you very much. You've been a wonderful audience. <laughs> Till next time. Bye.